I'm Catherine Ross, and I'm here live from the NYSU with Jim Kramer. Jim, what's on the top of your mind this morning? Well, you know what? I think that we're, uh, we're underestimating the power of the trade deal, uh, having spent a lot of time on it. And it was almost, a, it almost failed. The, the Chinese gave in on a huge number of things. Now, I read a lot of the conventional media. Once again, the mainstream media just hates Trump so much. Uh, but Lighthizer negotiated a deal that really is predicated upon the notion that the Chinese are out of pork almost. Most of their pork is raised on backyard farms. Uh, the airborne nature of Asian swine flu is really underestimated. The backyard farms are almost wiped out. There is a supply of frozen pork. The Chinese will go through that. There's the possibility of tremendous food inflation in China. People forget that Tiananmen Square was started by food inflation, not by free speech. The Chinese do not want that, neither the hardliners nor President Xi. Because of the leverage of pork, the United States has been able to create, I think, a, uh, a very advantageous situation just by giving back the rollback on half, right? Just on half of, the, of one, the 12%. Most important thing people should know is that Lighthizer said to them, okay, listen, guys, change your ways in a couple of months or the tariffs come right back. So uh, I know that people who hate Trump uh, feel that it was a bad deal. I say hate him or like him. I was shocked at how positive the deal was for America. I didn't think it would be this good. But I also had done more work on pork, I think, than most people. And pork is the ful fulcrum issue uh, because you cannot possibly uh, recognize how horrendous Asian uh, swine flu is and how easily caught it is. If you and I were to go to a pig farm in this country, we would, uh, it's almost like there's a, uh, in, in the movie, in the book, The Stand, um, these places are quarantined, very heavily quarantined. You'd never get into your pig farm. And in China, they didn't realize how per pervasive sw uh, Asian swine flu is, and we had no vaccine for it. We're trying, so Wettis is trying, we don't have anything for it. So while some trade experts are arguing that this trade deal is light, as you've just explained, you don't think that it's just a trade deal to put the December 15th tariffs on ice? Oh, no, no. This is, uh, there are really some serious uh, discussions about intellectual property, uh, and that should lead to um, some changes in the way the Chinese operate. And if it doesn't, the tariffs come right back. I mean, there is no... Um, uh, there's no hiding from the fact that the United States is much more sophisticated in trade talks than it used to be. So this was just phase one. When we get the two sides coming back to the table for a phase two trade deal, are investors going to start feeling that holiday hangover? No, no. You know, what, phase two will take a long time. Um, you, you need to see, there'll be no phase two unless there's a change in the way that the Chinese uh, handle themselves. So um, I would not worry about phase two unless things have gotten already much better from phase one. The president has the upper hand because of the, um, the swine flu situation. It's, see, it, it, it's not the upper hand because of trade, because the Chinese would play the long game with trade. It has to do with, the, uh, with inflation and how it can be made, uh, how the inflation got out under control uh, and how Tiananmen Square, it must be avoided at all costs by the Chinese because that would turn the Europeans against them. Right now, a lot of people say, why doesn't the president have a unified, you know, that it would really have been much better to have a, a coalition the willing against the Chinese. Uh, the Chinese are against us and so are the Germans. Uh, I think that we should never forget that the Germans are much closer to the Chinese than they are to the United States, given the fact that the relations are so fractured between the president and Merkel. Now, speaking of this year, over on Real Money, you wrote about one wild card in 2020, and her name is Elizabeth Warren. Right. Jim, let's take a look at that, because she has gone after every sector and industry, and yes. it's not quite known which one she'll go after next. So if she grabs the bull by the horns, what should investors do? Where can they find opportunity? Well, no, um, cash, if she, I mean, my, the theme, theme of my Real Money piece is that the insurance risk it, it, it is what you need to worry about that there is no opportunity with Elizabeth Warren other than cash. Um, cash for those of us. Now, I'm not saying, let me just explain to people. 
This is not me endorsing her or slamming her. Uh, I have always favored paying my fair share of taxes. Uh, when I studied, she taught at Harvard Law, the, the rap on Harvard Law and corporate tax was that it was unfair that there were two levels of tax. You tax at the corporate level and you tax at the dividend level. Uh, I know she is well aware of what they teach at Harvard. She is saying that there should be a third tax. Um, I think that the uh, broader tax that she should have been going toward is a consumption tax. That's how you really attack uh, uh, rich people too. Um, but she is uh, a very serious person when it comes to trying to figure out uh, ways to redistribute income. And if the way to redistribute income is to take wealthy people's capital. And the way to do that, what that would do is it would force wealthy people to liquidate. And if it were stocks that they own, they'd have to liquidate them. So you would have more, classically more sellers than buyers. Um, and uh, it's not like a Len Lenin Kulak situation where you had to kill the Kulaks. It's not like that. But I think we should understand that the um, that she's really upset with cor uh, corporate America, where the CEOs make far more, and the hedge fund managers make far more than the worker, and she's trying to address that imbalance. And it's a perfectly legitimate thing to do. I think there's a lot of people who feel that's right, which is why I think that to uh, decide that she isn't a candidate, uh, that she's a candidate that is uh, unimportant is a mistake. So there we are. Our real money stock of the day today is Boeing. After we got a Wall Street Journal report, they're looking to pause or reduce yeah. 737 max. Yeah, production. and I have said that Boeing's going to do everything it can uh, to maintain its dividend. Uh, and if that's the case, the stock will have a floor. Uh, it's obvious to me that what happened here, when they made their budget forecast, uh, counting rules for Boeing insisted that they make a determination about whether it would be um, halted or, or uh, it, 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 you know, this was done several months ago, whether it be halted and they didn't know, so that they built a, a model which said it wouldn't be. So now here we are. Um, at the end of the year and it was halted. So uh, they're just being realistic about what would happen. And I think that CFO will find the money. Should investors be worried or should the industry be worried if they do pause 737? Um, well, you know, the industry, a lot. there's a lot of reverberations, but people are uh, ignoring them. You've got United you know, Technologies would be one and GE would be one, Honeywell, people don't care. Now, the reason why people don't care I think is because if you take a look at Southwest Air, Southwest Air wanted a very big settlement. Eh, they got some money. It's all delay. No one's going to say, uh, I mean, the biggest risk with the 737 MAX is that people won't want to fly it. Um, by the time they get to see in the air, I don't even remember. Uh, it's certainly going to be the safest airline out there, safest plane out there by the time they get in. Um, but it, every month does impinge on cash flow for United Technologies or GE. Um, but that's, uh, if you got an approval, an important approval, uh, then you'll say, why did you sell GE or United Technologies? They're, I think they're taking into account a lot of the risk. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Guys, thanks for tuning in. We are now heading over to our Action Alerts Plus Daily Rundown show over on ActionAlertsPlus.com. I'm Catherine Ross, and we'll see you tomorrow.